The history of football takes us back to ancient civilizations, where various forms of balls were utilized in games. The earliest versions were crafted from animal bladders, specifically inflated pig's bladders. Consequently, these balls were contingent on the size and shape of the inflated pig's bladder. In 1855, Charles Goodyear played a pivotal role in the evolution of footballs by designing and constructing the first vulcanized rubber footballs. Notably, Richard Linden made significant strides in 1862 when he is believed to have invented the first inflatable rubber bladders for these balls. These bladders were sturdier and better at maintaining their shape. As time passed, advancements in materials and construction techniques further improved and the shape became more sophisticated. Today, for an official football to gain approval from FIFA, it must adhere to specific criteria. The ball must weigh between 410 and 450 grams, and it should be a sphere with a circumference ranging from 68 to 70 centimeters, allowing for a maximum deviation of 1.5% from perfect sphericity when inflated to a pressure of 0.8 atmospheres. So, why are footballs perfectly round spheres? And what are the consequences of having perfectly round footballs? Let's delve deeper into this intriguing topic. Every four years, before the FIFA World Cup, the official ball is launched on the market, introducing the ball that will be used throughout the tournament to the world. Typically, these balls are given official names. For the 2010 World Cup, they named the ball Jabulani, which means to celebrate in a Sizulu, one of South Africa's 11 national languages. It marked Adidas's 11th edition of balls used in World Cups. Now, let's delve into the features of Jabulani. It has a weight of 439 grams and a circumference of 69 centimeters. Adidas, the creator of Jabulani, staunchly defended their ball, touting it as revolutionary thanks to new grip and groove technologies that advanced football. The concept was that the ball's surface would enhance control and grip, while its aerodynamic properties would ensure exceptional stability in flight. Jabulani's distinctiveness lay in its lack of panels and internal stitching, making it the roundest ball ever used in FIFA World Cups. According to Adidas, Jabulani was the most accurate and stable ball they had ever produced up to that point. However, players had a different perspective on Jabulani. They complained about the ball's unstable and unpredictable trajectory, which they believed made the game unfair. Many expressed that it was excessively bouncy, leading to constant overheads. Additionally, it posed significant challenges for putting spin on the ball. Goalkeepers argued that the ball seemed to slow midair like a balloon, making it difficult to predict the trajectory. Some goalies, such as Ika Casillas, Gianluigi Buffon, and Julio Cesa, voiced their opinions about the ball. Experts at NASA later determined what the issue was. When a football is launched into the air, it faces the force of aerodynamic drag, a formidable resistance that can significantly affect its speed and trajectory. The magnitude of this drag force depends on various factors, including the characteristics of the object itself, the properties of the air through which it moves. In addition, when it comes to objects moving through the air, is the concept of critical transition speed. This refers to the velocity at which the airflow around the object shifts from being smooth and laminar to turbulent and chaotic. This transition is of utmost importance because it can profoundly affect the object's behavior. Traditionally designed footballs, with their 32 pentagonal panels and internal stitching, which resulted in a rough surface, had a relatively low critical transition speed approximately 35 miles per hour. In other words, the airflow around these balls remained relatively stable at speeds below this threshold. The Jabulani, the ball that introduced the concept of fewer panels, featured only eight bonded panels, resulting in an exceptionally smooth surface. However, it presented a unique challenge that became known as the Jabulani effect. According to NASA's studies conducted in 2010, the critical transition speed of the Jabulani was much higher, estimated to be around 55 miles per hour. This higher critical speed meant that the airflow around the Jabulani became turbulent and unpredictable at a significantly faster pace compared to traditional footballs. At this higher speed, an interesting phenomenon occurred. The drag force on the Jabulani suddenly dropped. This unexpected change in aerodynamics contributed to the erratic swerves and dips in the ball's flight path. 
In the high-speed and precision-driven world of professional football, where shots, crosses, and passes require exceptional accuracy. But the Jabulani's behavior in the air became highly problematic. The faster transition to turbulent airflow made it challenging for players to predict the ball's trajectory, leading to difficulties in controlling and maneuvering the ball effectively. According to Rebi Mehta, a NASA aerospace engineer, the critical speed of a football is determined by its surface roughness. So to better understand the Jabulani's unique aerodynamic properties, we can draw parallels with other sports equipment. Golf balls, for instance, have dimples on their surface, which serve to reduce aerodynamic drag and increase lift, allowing them to travel greater distances with accuracy. Similarly, traditional footballs achieve predictable flight characteristics through their stitching and rough textures, which influence the flow of air around them. But the Jabulani, with its sleek and perfect spherical design, possessed a dual nature. On one hand, it was highly aerodynamic, allowing it to reach high speeds and cover distances rapidly. On the other hand, its smooth surface and unique grip and groove textures made it prone to sudden drops in drag at very high speeds, resulting in the unexpected and often challenging flight behavior experienced by both players and goalkeepers. Now you can understand why a football isn't a perfect sphere. So the next time you watch an exhilarating match, remember that it's the imperfections of the football that truly perfect the game. And don't forget to comment, how old were you when you realized that a football is not a perfect sphere? Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel.